Welcome to our channel my dear students. Today we are going to talk about the very important topic that is froth flotation process in metallurgy. So here what is mean by froth flotation? So actually it is a one of the extraction process. It is a one of the extraction process of extracting the metal from ores. Okay. Likewise, the first step of uh, extraction of metal is concentration. So what do you mean by the concentration? The concentration is nothing but, so the removal of non-metallic, rocky and siliceous materials, which will be collectively called as gang. The gang particles can be removed by the help of concentration of ore. That can be done by froth flotation process. This is not only done by froth flotation process, there will be a number of methodologies are available here. So here uh, it may be a gravity separation, magnetic separation, leaching and froth flotation. There will be a number of uh, uh, concentration of ore processes there, out of which one of the processes is froth flotation process. Okay, are you able to understand? Right. And uh, froth flotation is a process of selectively separating the hydrophobic materials from hydrophilic materials. So hydrophobic materials can be separated from hydrophilic parts. Okay, right. And usually this is used for the separation of uh, sulfide ores. The metallic ore particles, that is sulfide ore particles are preferentially wetted by oil whereas gong particles are by water are you able to understand so we talk about the two particles one is a uh, gang particles that is called uh, impurities present in that what are gang particles the gang particles are nothing but the non-metallic impurities siliceous materials as well as the rocky materials these are all called gang particles so the removal of gong particles from the ore which is called the concentration process. It is a, one of the concentration process that is froth flotation. And next we talk about the instrumentation which is used to do this process. So what all the facility we need to do this process. So here the thing is the froth flotation here we need of a rotating paddle. So which is going to rotate, which is going to stir, which is going to agitate the reaction mixture. So here uh, which will be taken as a stirrer, here we are taken and then pulp ore along with the oil we added. So here uh, air is blown and uh, that, that is going to stir this entire mixture. Because of that we added oil also. So some of the frothing agent will also be added to that, that will be oil. So that due to that the oil will generate froth. Froth is nothing but uh, lather. Okay. The lather is getting produced here. Okay. That is why from that lather our ore is getting separated. Our ore is getting absorbed on the lather instead of this uh, water. So here the gang particles, the gang particles which are wetted by water according to our principle. So the gang particles are settled down here and uh, ore particles are move in the froth, then froth can be skimmed off, then it can be separated and dried, so they can, uh, after that we can separate that metals, okay. Here also we are getting only crude metal, it's not a pure metal, crude metal only we can separate, okay, right. So but here it is a process of concentration, just by increasing the concentration of metallic particles in ores that is called the uh, uh, concentration of ores okay next we do the process so how to do this process so here how to do this process this is a procedure what is the procedure we know so here initially the ore will be taken that can be crashed into powder form that will be suspended in water okay that will be suspended in water just you look at so here i am going to take my ore here, I am going to take my ore here and that can be powdered and that will be dissolved with water. That will be, that is called suspended with water. I suspended with water, everything. So now this orange color will be looking like the ore is dissolved in water, that uh, liquid is there here. 
After that, you have to add a frothing agent. So some of the frothing agent will be added to that. What is the role of frothing agent? The frothing agent, which is used to produce froth, which is used to create froth. So which produces lather. Okay. So that is the role of frothing agent will be added. After that, some of the collector molecule will be added to that. So then um, after that, the uh, rotating paddle will start to rotate by the blowing air. So we'll stir the mixture. So the froth is getting generated. The froth is go to the upward direction. Then froth is getting gen um, separated and that can be skimmed off and dry. Then uh, we can extract the metal from that uh, froth. Okay. That is what the process is going there. So just uh, add collector, then agitate the mixture of by blowing air. The froth is generated, the skimmed off, and then try to recover the concentrated ore. Okay, that is what the process is over. Okay, and next is what are all the things which are used for this process? What are all the chemicals which are used for this process? The thing is, first one is the frothing agent. The frothing agent, what is the role of frothing agent? To generate the froth. Okay, so here generally we are using the oils, fatty acids, particularly we use pine oils, eucalyptus oils. These are all will be used as a frothing agent. Okay, and the froth stabilizers. For what purpose we are adding froth, froth stabilizers? Because the froth may be unstable. The bubbles may form here may be unstable. So the lifetime of the uh, bubble will be very less. So increase the lifetime of the froth or lifetime of the bubble so we need to add aniline and cresol these will all be acting as a froth stabilizers which is will be increase the lifetime of the froth and third one is the collector what is the use of collector which enhances the non-wettability of minerals and stabilizers non-wettability of the minerals and stabilizers so here we used the sodium ethyl xanthate as well as sodium lauryl sulfate. These will be used as a collector molecule. How it works? Usually how collector will work? Let us see. Let us discuss. Here, these are all the two collector molecules we used. Usually any surfactants we can use. So here I give two examples for that. Sodium ethyl xanthate. C2H5 OC double band S S minus Na plus. Okay. So... This is the sodium ethyl xanthate, structure of sodium ethyl xanthate. Our next one is the sodium lauryl sulfate. So CH3, CH2, 10 times totally 12 carbon atoms are there along with that SO4 minus Na plus is there. So you just look at in both the case, both the surfactants, some of the part will be looking like polar. They are having charges, but here there is no charges here. So that is what this charged area will be acting as a head part. This will be acting as a head part. So here it will be hydrophilic in nature. Then tail part will be act as a hydrophobic in nature. Okay. Are you able to understand? And here also the same thing. This is the tail part. This is the head part. Head part is the polar one and also hydrophilic. Tail part is a non-polar one and also it is a hydrophobic in nature. Okay. Now let us discuss the mechanism of achieving the non-wettability of ore. So here you have taken ore. Okay. So here as we know that this is the sodium ethyl xanthate. You just look at. So I am writing this uh, part as a slashed lines or uh, wave lines. These wave lines are nothing but this hydrophobic part up to which this is the hydrophobic part. This is the hydrophobic part what we are taken. Okay. So this is what I represent like this. And hydrophilic part which will be taken as a head part. This will be having a charged one. Are you able to understand? This will be a charged one is a hydrophilic part. Ha charged ones are usually polar in nature. Are you able to understand students? Here charged ones are hydrophilic and polar in nature. But uh, non-polar in nature that is hydrophobic in nature. Now you look at this is a ore. Okay, this is a ore. Ore having a charge. Am I right? The ore, the metallic particle will having 
charged particles because uh, if suppose if i am taking fe2 o3 ion or otherwise zinc sulfide the zinc having positive charge okay the sulfur having negative charge so that's what it has it is a polar one o is always a polar one okay now now we have a collector the collector molecule having two parts what are all the two parts one is hydrophilic another is hydrophobic this polar part will be able to attract towards to that ore okay so instead of which the ore is a polar part the polar nature of ore that is the metallic particles will be able to attract this hydrophilic part that polar part the polar polar will attract towards to each other and uh, that is what uh, the ore will be uh, having this kind of structure now the hydrophobic parts are surrounded the metal ore that is metallic particle that is ore so now the hydrophobic part which are not which are non polar the non polar which will not be dissolved in water because we are taken the ore in water are able to understand we are taken the ore in water so in that ore particle the ore which is having metallic particle the metallic particle will having a charge that charge can be attracted by this charge particles because this having charged one this is having minus plus charge is charged one so this hydrophilic part attracted towards the ore and the hydrophobic parts are surrounded with each other now you look at initially the ore is wetted by water now we are mixing the ore with water are you able to understand the ore is mixed with water now okay but here by the way of adding collector molecule the collector will able to absorb that is the hydrophobic part will are surrounded the ore particle now this will be acting as a water repellent this will be acting as a water repellent why it is that acting as a water repellent because hydrophobic part are surrounded the ore particle or able to understand hydrophobic parts are surrounded the ore particle because of that the non polar cannot be dissolved in water that's what it attains non wettable property are able to understand this is what the non wettable property will comes to ore so once the ore which will not be wetted by water so now the oil can come and it form a layer like structure now a ore is getting wetted by oil okay oil is less dense so that's what uh, it can easily come up uh, from the froth in the froth also now we can look at so here the uh, ore that means a ore which is dissolved in water now it is converted into non wettable with water so it will be collected with uh, what oil the oil can be because of that rotation the oil can be uh, separated as bubbles or froth in that froth now our ore particles will also be there that is what the sulfide ores can be skimmed off are able to understand students this is very much important very very important one okay are able to understand this is what the what is that our uh, process that is a uh, froth flotation process and next thing is depressant what we used so why we need to use a depressant the depressant what is the role of depressant it reduce the flotation of ore particles and make the impurities as soluble complex so the makes the uh, or into soluble complex how we can achieve this so here it reduces the flotation property of ore okay suppose our ore may contain the two type of impurities suppose if i am taken this is uh, a galena ore galena that is a lead sulfide here if i am taking lead sulfide lead sulfide in which zinc sulfide may also come because that is also a sulfide ore am i right that is also a sulfide ore that's what the zinc sulfide may also enter into froth okay so if suppose if it is taken as 95 percentage if it is a 5 percentage this will be considered as a impurity so now we need to remove the impurity by the way of adding now we uh, add to remove the impurity by the way of adding this kind of depressants the depressants here used as a sodium cyanide so once i used a sodium cyanide here once i used a sodium cyanide the zinc sulfide which will be reacting with the sodium cyanide to form this kind of soluble complex which will be eliminated as soluble complex so which will be so now if it is converted into soluble complex 
so which will not be if it is converted into soluble complex which will not be come into froth are able to understand which will be soluble in this itself okay so there is that is what the lead sulfide bore can be separated completely okay are able to understand students that is what the froth flotation process will works okay froth flotation process it's a very very important question which will be asked many times in board exams ka froth flotation process explain it and what are all the chemicals which are used for the froth flotation process they'll be asking questions from this threaten area like uh, what is the role of frothing agent and give an example likewise froth stabilizers collectors depressant what all what is the exact role of collector froth stabilizers depressants etc etc and what is the example for each you have to know at least two example for each or one example for each stabilizer froth stabilizers frothing agent collector and depressant you have to know at least one example for each then only you can able to write the questions okay and thank you so much for watching please go forward to others to get benefit and don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't forget to put a like to this video thank you so much for watching thank you once again thank you